is up, guys? It is Coaster Watch here. Today, I got another fantastic roller coaster countdown for you guys. This is my top 10 roller coaster manufacturers. So, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is li literally just um, manufacturing companies that produce roller coasters. Uh, sorry, I feel like the GP are going to be lost in this video, but for you enthusiasts, you guys will get me. So, anyways, let's start with a couple honorable mentions. First, we got SNS. They made some really cool rides. Um, they made the 40 Free Fly clones. They made 40 coasters such as X2 and Ijenenka, however you say that. Uh, they made Dodonpa, some other air powered launch coasters. And they were the first to produce the El Loco model, or most people refer to Mumbo Jumbo. A great company, just didn't quite cut it for me. Next, we got the Din Corporation. Now, without the Din Corp, let's be real, they made some pretty bad rides. But without these guys, um, wooden coasters wouldn't be where they're at today. And lastly, Vacoma. I know, everybody hates Vacoma. I do too. I haven't, I haven't ridden a single coaster that I'm a fan of of Vacoma. I've ridden some that I enjoy, like Rocket Roller Coaster and Expedition Everest, but they don't really do too much for me. Of course, there's Lek Coaster, but that's really the only thing they have at the moment. Anyways, let's get in with the top 10. Starting off the number 10 spot, we have Aerodynamics. Now, let's be real. Pretty much everyone here has a home park with a very, very bad aero coaster. And I get that. These guys were the inventors of the steel tubular track. So without these guys, the industry would not be the same as it is today. That's pretty scary to think about. Because we wouldn't have companies like Intamin or B&M or Schwarzkopf ever come along and make some of the greatest rides on Earth. That's why I love aerodynamics. And Magnum XL200, come on. That started the coaster wars. Got to give them some credit for that. But they've also made some of the worst rides on the planet. That's why they're coming at the number 10 spot. At the number 9 spot, we have Premier Rides. They make some really fun launch coasters such as the Flight of Fear um, models, the... Um, Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast Models. The only one I've done is Revenge of the Mummy at Universal, and it's a pretty enjoyable ride. Um, the only thing about these rides is that some people say they're a bit jerky, and they, they are all a little bit short. At the number eight spot, we have Schwarzkopf. These guys have made some of the most intense coasters on the planet, such as Mindbender at Galaxyland, Mindbender Six Flags Over Georgia, and they were the first to um, incorporate the vertical loop into a roller coaster. Um, that's right, New Revolution, Six Flags Magic Mountain, and then came along, um, Super Duper Looper Hershey Park. Only one I've ridden is Scorpion. It was a great ride, very intense, I love it. At the number seven spot, we have Custom Coasters International. So these guys made some really nice classic wooden roller coasters, such as Raven, Legend, and Boulder Dash. These guys make some fantastic coasters. But, only thing weighing this company down is that they are, um now like out of business they have went bankrupt maybe not bankrupt i don't really know the full story on them but they made some bad rides that's what's weighing them down and also um i think i'm not really too sure the whole backstory but i'm pretty sure it was like the son or like the sons of the creator of cci went on to make gravity group and gci i'm that that i'm not sure uh but anyways, these guys were nice innovators, and without them, Gravity Group and GCI wouldn't be here. Speaking of GCI, that is my number six. So, a lot of people kind of hate on GCI recently, but I'm actually a really big fan of their coasters. I've ridden White Lightning and Thunderhead. I love both of them. Well, I had a bad first impression of Thunderhead, but then I rode it in the rain in the front row, and it was awesome. Um, these guys also made some really good roller coasters, such as Wood Coaster, Python and Bamboo Forest, Gold Striker, Wood and Timber. <coughs> Excuse me, Troy, um, all these great roller coasters. The only thing about this company is that all of their coasters tend to be the same with their signature curve drop, um, sporadic airtime hills, and a few bank turns. If they kind of like branch out more and do like more like something like in the style of Voyage, that would be really cool. I would like to see GCI try to pull something off like that. At the number five spot, we have Mac Rides. These guys are awesome. They made some really cool coasters such as Helix, um... Blue Fire, Flash, the new um, hyper coaster coming to Dream World. These guys have made some awesome launch hyper coasters, and they also made some really nice family launch coasters, some nice family coasters, and wild mouse coasters. Um, if they did more work in the U.S., I would like them a little bit more. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe a little bit more of a variety, and maybe that'll move them up. 
and their rides aren't the most forceful I've heard. At the number four spot, we have Gravity Group. I'm a huge Gravity Group fanboy. They made my boy Voyage. Um, if you didn't already know, I think Voyage is top five in the world. But um, these guys, I'm actually a really big fan of their smaller compact wooden coaster too, such as Switchback and uh, Mind Blower, which I'm checking out in a few weeks here. Great company overall. Um, I heard their coasters are a little bit more on the rougher side though, but it's all good. At the number three spot, this might shock some people, but it might also make some people happy. It is B&M. Now, as much as a lot of enthusiasts crap on B&M, they are one of the most successful companies around. Let's think about it this way. An average B&M versus an average Aero. An average B&M will be comfortable, smooth, maybe not the most forceful, but still an enjoyable ride. But the average Aero will be a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit rough, not even that forceful. Uh, the only problem with B&M I have is that they don't quite deliver like some of these other companies do. You know, the airtime isn't the strongest and the intensity isn't as good as some other companies that deal with intensity. But overall, they make smooth, comfortable, and enjoyable rides. And that's why B&M is at the number three spot. At the number two spot, we have Rocky Mountain Construction. This company has taken the coaster community by storm. Everyone wants an RMC at their home park now. Uh, these guys are looking to build, I think, four, three or four coasters in 2018. And there's a lot of speculation and a lot of rumors on everyone saying their home park is going to get one, like Gwazi coming in 2019. I'm still all the way on board with that. I don't care what anyone says. But only problem with them is that they have no variety. All of their coasters are exactly the same, and they're still a fairly young company. Who knows? RMC could just be a huge fad and just die out before 2020. Or if they let's give RMC a good 10 years. Once we move down the road 10 years, then I would actually consider moving them up. But what is my number one manufacturer? It is Intamin. Intamin is fantastic. They made some of the best rides on earth, such as their launch coasters, Maverick, Tehran. All these, Eye Speed, Red Fire, Cheetah Hunt, <laughs> come on, even if you don't like it, it's not a bad ride, at least it's comfortable and smooth. Um, Millennium Force, um, they made Intimidator 305, which is insanity, um, Expedition G4, Sky Rush, even if you don't like Sky Rush, you gotta admit, it still delivers. All these great rides just deliver. They give so much ejector airtime and so much intensity and smoothness. Everything about these rides are good. Some are better than others. Some rides are a little bit uncomfortable. But you got to admit, these com this company delivers some of the greatest rides on this planet. And they have a nice variety. That's why I'm putting Intamin at the number one spot. So leave a comment on what your favorite manufacturer is. Uh, leave a comment if you have an RMC in your home park or if you want one. And thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to um, leave suggestions for the next few videos below. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.